I think for a long time in, in, in Europe, the topic of opioid induced uh, respiratory compromise is much more underestimated because the treatment protocols probably vary a bit. That's one thing. And the second thing is that from a historical point of view in Europe, much more patients stays much longer at a post-operative anesthesia care unit as in the US, for example. So this probably describes why in Europe the alertness for a respiratory compromise was a bit later. However, since last year, even in the United Kingdom, there's a lot of publicity about this topic and even in Europe, it's now considered as a serious problem. I believe the respiratory concerns varies in Singapore compared to the US because we are dealing with a different set of population. In, in Singapore, most patients are operant naive. They have never had opioids uh, in the past, apart from, you know, they're coming for this admission. And also, they are, a lot of them are sedative naive. They don't, it's very unusual to, for them to take sedatives uh, out, outside of clinical care. Uh, for any reason. So uh, I, I believe this makes them a little bit more vulnerable to, um, to, the, to the side effects of opioids, including respiratory depression.